guys. So I decided to break up the ribbing part of this um, throwing video because um, there's a lot of steps and I felt like it was a good point to break. I don't like the videos to go on forever. They're probably hard to watch that way. Uh, so I'm going to um, just use a sheet metal rib um, for this part. And what I'll be doing in this video is um, kind of refining this form and I'll be dealing with the foot, which in this case um, is a thrown foot. So it's basically like a flat bottom pot with the, uh, and it looks like there's a foot on the outside, which is a pretty cool thing for flat bottom pieces. Um, there's some neat things you can do there. It can save you some time, but it, without sacrificing uh, anything visual. Um, it's also useful when you're gonna be doing a pulled spout or a handle, things like that, where you're gonna have like things sticking off the pot and it's kind of difficult to put in the chuck and there's lots of reasons why it's a useful uh, skill to learn. So. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. So, okay, let's get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to be doing is adding some water to the interior. And um, I mentioned this in the previous video, but uh, I, instead of using ribs on the inside, because this form is concave uh, and it gets narrower in the center, I don't like to get ribs down in there. It's difficult. Um, it doesn't work that well. You end up pushing the concavity out of the pot and you end up with like a cylinder again. So um, I think it's best to actually use your fingers on the inside and just do most of the shaping by removing or scraping slip uh, with the sheet metal rib. So we're just going to allow the sheet metal rib to kind of flex against the form um, to get that concave line. And the other thing you can do is just hold the rib like this and grab your pinky and wrap it around to get the rib to flex back a little bit. Okay, so just going to support the rim. I'm going to be starting at the rim and I'll just apply a little pressure and work my way down. <coughs> so I'm going to take my middle finger and just press out uh, like just under this rim here to create the top line right here. And then I'm just going to clean up the rib because everything's got slip on it right now. So we're going to be kind of shaping and removing slips uh, simultaneously. So I'm going to start there again and just work my way down. I'm only applying counter pressure to the rib uh, if the rib or if the clay is not filling the shape of the rib. So, um, and that hasn't really been happening too much here. So I'm not pushing much from the inside out. Most of the pressure is coming from the outside, um, which makes sense if you consider that it's a concave shape. Um, okay, so there's some more slip. I'm going to be removing that. And again, just scraping, scraping and shaping. I'm pushing out into that corner, but not too much because I need this corner or uh, the diameter at this corner to be narrower than the diameter up at the rim, right? Otherwise it's gonna look heavy. We need the rim to be wider. And I'm not sure we have that right now. I'll have to fix that. And then the bottom here is really the only uh, convex part of the pot. It's, you know, like a bowl shape. So I'm going to flex the rib the other way. Like that. And just remove that slip. going to stretch this a little bit more because I want the rim to be the widest part of this pot, which will really make it a much more dynamic form. And again, I'm just running the rib down the wall. Like that. Now I'm just looking down this line really carefully and I'm finding that I have a low spot right down here. So I'm gonna bring my hand down on the inside and just press out into the rib at that point. And that'll just help um, to make this line continuous. You know, like this is all just the things that I'm thinking about in my work. If you want this to be like throwing lines or rib lines, or it could be any number of things. This is just like one way is to make a very, um, continuous 
concave kind of a curve. Uh, okay, so I'm going to take my rib now, press down uh, on the rim, and scrape some slip away there. And then uh, on the side again, like that. And you can see now I've got a nice, clearly defined line. Um, the only thing I'm not crazy about at this point is this rim, instead of kind of going in, it's kind of going up. Uh, so I'm going to use a chamois cloth. Uh, to hold the chamois correctly, you'll just hold your left hand out, your middle and first finger. The chamois will go between, like this, and then you'll just flip your thumb down on top of the chamois, like that. So then the space that you've created there between your middle and first finger and your thumb, right, in between there, that's where the rim goes. So it looks like this. And usually what happens is you kind of touch the piece uh, with the chamois like that and then you need to add more water. So it looks like this. So you've got the chamois wrapped around the rim like that and then you've got kind of all kinds of control over that surface. I'm applying downward pressure with my thumb here and just gently squeezing the rim between my thumb and my first finger like that. And what will happen then is you'll kind of collapse the wall slightly here, right? So um, if you want that to be a nice crisp edge, go back in with your um, sheet metal rib like this and just fix it back up. Good. All right, so that looks great. Um, the next step is going to be, um, we're just going to need to deal with the foot a little bit. Okay, so in order to do that, we'll take a um, wooden undercutting tool. We'll take a wooden undercutting tool like this. Um, you can use one of the uh, Mud Shark Mud Tools undercutting tools, but they're not sharp and they flex a little bit, so I don't find them to be like the best tool for this particular job. So a piece of wood that you've like sharpened um, with a straight angled edge like that works really well. All right, so I'm going to take my undercutting tool and hold it pretty much perpendicular to the pot like this and line it up with the part of the pot that I like or the part of the pot that I used the rib on here. And then like the bottom inch or so, let's see, it's the bottom, yeah, it's an inch. Uh, we're gonna be removing material down there. So that will look like this. I'm gonna cut in and just let the wheel turn and just sort of keep following that groove. And I'm trying to curve in a little bit as I go. So eventually we'll touch down here, like that. Okay, and now that's just a really shallow curve that touches down to the bat. Now I'm gonna take my needle tool, like this, and I'll slip it under the ring that I've made. This is now a ring, because I've touched down inside um, as well, and I can just take the needle tool, slip it under the ring, cut through the ring, and then lift it up, and it'll just come right off like that. Okay, this is the tricky part. You don't have to kind of go further with this if you don't want to. This can kind of be the end of your pot for uh, um, <laughs> lack of a better <laughs> way to talk about it. But if you practice this technique, it can be really useful. Uh, so just, just so you know, it's a little bit more advanced. So I have, I've wet the rim and I've got my left uh, hand supporting the rim. Now I'm gonna take my first finger and the sponge here, the same sort of surfaces that I was pulling with, and I'm gonna throw down against the bat. So what that means is I'm gonna be following the contour till the point where I wanna create the foot, and then I'm gonna push in and create like a little bit of a, a little bit, bit of negative space. It's kind of like trimming, I'll be removing uh, a little bit of the profile, but I'll be doing that by pushing in and down. So I'm going to follow down this curve 
then I'm going to push in quite hard right here and gradually I've got water on the piece so it's not like pushing back or anything if it starts to you'll want to just stop and add some water you can see that's kind of the beginning of a foot right it's a little wide and it's a little flared but it's the right idea we're going down the right path here for a foot um, now what I'm going to do is take this little flat uh, wooden tool, just anything's fine, that's just got a right angle on the end, um, and then just cut in a little bit, like that, cut under a little bit. Now that's starting to look like a foot, but I'm still not that, this is like a, you know, back and forth kind of a thing. Um, I'm still not that crazy about it, because it looks a little wide to me. Like this looks a little bit wider than I want it to. So I'm going to do it again. Start up here. Work my way down. The pot will want to like wiggle a little bit on you. So you have to support it at the rim. So I've got my fingers kind of just inside the rim. It's a little better. Now I'm just going to cut away a little bit. There we go. So that's a little narrower. And now I can just sort of articulate that form a little bit with the tool. And then I'll undercut the foot. Okay. Last thing to do is just take our sheet metal rib and just wrap it around this curve and just kind of polish that up a little bit. So now we've got that nice curve meeting this nice convex, uh, sorry, concave line, and then the sort of straight inward moving line of the rim. So I just want to point out from this perspective, um, if you look down into the interior, you'll see the flat bottom, and then that little bit of like, um, uh, the wall encroaching on the bottom. And that's typical of a flat bottom thrown form where you create this foot. So the trick is to make sure that the wall isn't so thick that that really starts to create an undercut, um, which would be difficult to clean. So this won't be difficult to clean, but um, that's something to watch for. It's just make sure you can sort of look down and see most of the interior of the pot.